the start of Mastery is King, this whole new concept of you don't have to tank specials, you don't have to tank hits. Uh, you can you can avoid them and you can mm-hmm. you can get M's after people who are coming in to hit with you by pairing them and it was so awesome. Hey everybody, today we have a podcast with everyone's favorite MCOC guru, Cam. If uh, if you watch my content, you probably know who Cam is. He is in For Loki. He uh, frequents a lot of uh, streams and just sort of <laughs> blesses us with the wisdom he, of, <laughs> he has on this game. Uh, he's got so much uh, in there in his head and I sort of pick his brain about the meta of MCOC and we sort of go over, because he's been playing this game since almost from the start, and we sort of go over the, the, the evolution of the meta of the game. You know, back in the day it was very different, it was simpler and the game has evolved so much since then and it's just really interesting to hear it uh, from him him and sort of talk about uh, where it went or where it was where it has gone how it how it got to where it is today and where potentially it's going in the future so uh, if uh, if you like these podcasts and I hope you do uh, just sit back and enjoy it uh, it's it's about an hour long and uh, yeah it's a great conversation I, I really enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to putting out some more stuff like this I'd like to go over Mom, the meta, awesome. the meta evolution that you outlined. That would, that's I think that's interesting. that's pretty interesting, right? Uh, yeah, I think MCOC has come a, a long way since it starts, and you know we've had we've had a bunch of different metas emerge and then fall down, and then either get nerfed or get replaced or get countered. Mm-hmm. Um, we started with we started with no real uh you know no real measure of skill in this game right you you started where there was no masteries you only had your block and you basically wanted to kill the enemy before they killed you Uh, (laughs) just mash into them when they weren't blocking yeah you mash into them when they weren't blocking and you couldn't parry them you couldn't dexterity out of their projectiles um, that made stun effects really, really powerful. Uh, I think Storm had a stun and Ronan had a stun back then. And they were really powerful back then because they could actually stun champions and yeah. give you more opportunity to hit into them. Um, it made uh, it Back in the day, armor was a big stat, right? Uh, it, it was a determinant between if you are going to die first or the enemy is going to die first and then damage over time came in and then you had Hawkeye who could prevent the opponent from uh, you know, using special. Was and he the first power drainer? Uh, I think Vision came beforehand. Oh, okay. I think Vision came beforehand. Uh, or maybe they came together. I, I'm not sure. If they, they probably were both there at the launch of the game. Um, and, you know, all of those... Um, and we we basically started from there, and then we had we had the start of masteries, and with the start of masteries came this whole new concept of you don't have to tank specials, you don't have to tank hits, uh, you can you can avoid them, and you can mm-hmm. you can get M's after people who are coming in to hit with you by pairing them, and it was so awesome. Yeah, the dexterity. <laughs> what a, what yeah, a, then, what a concept to 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 dodge a special and then punish them yeah, for it yeah. and then we we became uh we became reliant on parry and then we we started to basically um uh, have this meta that, that was focused completely on perfect block and um uh, those that mastery and those synergies they made up all of the game black bolt magneto cyclops and Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, those were the two teams you saw everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. So it gave you the perfect block, and then it gave you some way to to do damage. It gave you the perfect block, and as long as you could perfect block, you you basically won the fight. What so was had... what was you could just use anybody in that case to attack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, in a three man team. Those were the three-man teams that gave you the perfect block. Okay. I think uh, if you had 
uh, Magneto and um, Cyclops in the same team, or Magneto and Blackpool in the same team, and you you put a Captain America in there, you you got perfect block on Captain America. But at the end of the day, uh, you, you basically became over reliant on those, and they just took those away. And back then, there was also willpower. That was healing you for crazy amounts, for crazy, crazy amounts, and um, used to tank specials from like uh, from enemies that put on a lot of debuffs on you, just to heal from those. Uh, <laughs> you used to tank, you used to tank Hulkbuster's beam from that SB2 because it put three long armor breaks on you, and you healed more than you took damage. Yeah. Which is just, <laughs> which is just ridiculous, right? Um, and you know, some champions back then, they were. It was impossible to win arena fights with them. You couldn't win an arena fight with Ant Man, or Ultron, or Hulkbuster, or Iron Fist, versus someone, or even Wolverine, versus someone who had uh, willpower, right? Oh. There was no, there was no despair back then. There was. And willpower was healing them based on the number of debuffs on them. You, and it not just unique. Made so, yeah, yeah. It just made so many champs. I think uh, that's about when I joined, like, right around the willpower nerf. I remember yeah, the yeah. units coming in for mm -hmm. people, and I remember mm -hmm. thinking something like, "Oh, I wish I had, you know, bought that mastery because I would have received that compensation." But it was a big. I, Big I compensation too. Things. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was all the units worth of the cores to unlock all three levels, wasn't it? Even yeah, I think they that. compensated them for willpower, and they also compensated for uh, suicide masteries because suicide masteries <clears throat> used to actually heal you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in a typical fight, so there was no downside other than recoil. There was the upside of healing, but now when you have suicides on you take more damage uh, than you're healing, so you're basically losing a net amount of health, right? Yeah. Uh, so back then, they, they also compensated them for for uh, suicides with five-star shards, I think. Or it was, it was around then. Anyways, uh, I think uh, that meta basically made just just a certain few characters very powerful and mm -hmm. afterwards especially that magneto cyclops black bull team that team fell completely from the meta because they they didn't have any other utility right yeah uh, comparatively after they nerfed perfect block and they nerfed willpower that team just completely fell off the, fell off the charts and back then there was no uh, ranked down because they the the alternative they gave you to get the resources and get the t4 cc back from uh from those those certain characters was to sell them and oh. <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i'm not kidding wow. and you had you basically if you wanted the, the t4 cc back you had to sell the cyclops who back then was exclusive to Realm of Legends rewards. Oh, wow. Really, really complicated situation, right? Yeah, that's um, interesting. And you can't run it again. Well, you could eventually. They give you the Labyrinth, but... Yeah, yeah, but back then there was no Labyrinth. There was... And maybe those, Labyrinth came a few months afterwards. I think. Those catalysts were very valuable back then. Super valuable, for sure. And you, you basically had to make the choice. Sell a champion or... Uh, just just keep them up. <laughs> wow, yeah, I would have kept them, I guess, but but yeah, jeez, it's a it's a it's a shitty <laughs> trade off. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, they haven't learned a lot since then. <laughs> I know, right? Jeez, who yeah. would have thought the the game could go so long without them actually learning a lot of <laughs> stuff about the meta and how hard it is to to alter your your roster? Uh, so but after, then we had after, go ahead, sir. After perfect block. It was, it was, uh, and after the willpower nerf, it became what? It became Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, Doctor Strange, Thor, okay, um, Star Lord, Captain America, World War Two. <clears throat> Those were the meta champions of the day. Uh, Daredevil, the mm -hmm. OG Daredevil, um, and 
so before before this, with perfect block, we started seeing block erosion introduced in the first iteration of map six, I think. And that basically uh, took away your block proficiency from the start of the fight. Oh, chunk okay. by chunk. Chunk that's, by chunk. That's been... I've seen that in a few recent nodes. Yeah, yeah. It, it was in Modoc's lab. Yeah, yeah. That's the nodes from back then. That's the nodes from that meta. Interesting. That Yeah, that felt very new when I saw it in Modoc's yeah. lab. <laughs> I so, just hadn't seen it before. <laughs> Yeah, that that whole that whole idea was introduced back then, and you know they had to do something to counter these teams that that basically allowed you to sit there block, and it 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 took no it took no amount of skill. You just you just took the right champions in, and mm-hmm. one of the teams had Doctor Strange in it, and Doctor Strange could heal if you mess up and not block. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is all post mastery, so you know parry and stuff were all in the game. Uh, but then we move on to the post nerf era, and then there had, there was Bl- and Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, and um, you stun lock people, and you reduce celebrity accuracy by hundred percent. Yeah, which is you, funny because those those weren't a result of the nerf, right? Those existed no, as no, well. No, they were yeah. equally op before and after the nerf. It was just the relative yeah, yeah. Uh, power because of Perfect Block being so good. Yeah, that yeah you... perfect block was so dominant. That That's crazy. The, that just overshadowed these characters. It's right? crazy that something could overshadow Scarlet Witch. <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah. the power that she had was just ridiculous. I remember my alliance leader a few years back. He was running this team with Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, and he was he was telling me that ah, this, the double this Scarlet Strange. Witch character. Yeah, this Scarlet <laughs> Witch character. She she can do some stuff, but I I, I don't know. I, I want to use my Doctor Strange because he gets a he's the one who gets a perfect block, mm-hmm. and he was using three star Doctor Strange in the Alliance War versus four star characters. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember also one... doing that. I remember using the three star Scarlet Witch uh, in the Alliance yeah, War yeah, versus yeah. even five star characters. Like yes, yeah, Scarlet. <laughs> she um... was a she was just a train that could not be stopped once you got her going yeah and getting her going was really easy right i mean yeah you just parry and then you start <laughs> and you, yeah you're off uh, on you're don't off even the need to parry you can block some hits take some block damage she'll regen back no worries yeah uh but i feel we saw the first sign for for the impending scarlet fish nerf in mordo so Mordo was really interesting, I think. He was the first character in the game that oh, that's punished what you, mean you by the Mordo sign. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. He was he was the first character in the game that punished you uh severely for stunning. by uh, from stunning him, right? And it was basically a direct complete counter to Scarlet to Thor. And he also had this ability that uh, prevented you from passively reducing his ability accuracy, right? Oh my god, dude. I never even thought about that. I, I, I love Mordo, but he is a direct counter to all of the old... To all of the old, uh, to all of the old meta. And, and he, you was get, the and he only had the healing reduction, too. I know that's, yeah, that's yeah. only if you get hit by the SP2, but that's... Yeah. yeah. So he, he came in... And everyone in that monthly event quest, he was a he was a boss of master mode. Yeah. And people cried their eyes out. People were like, my "This is witch. impossible. My Scarlet Witch is degening. Why is she degening? If this is a cash grab." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember though. I remember this event quest. I was just yeah, in my yeah. first alliance, and uh, Doctor Strange still handled it. Uh, yeah, for sure. He was he was good, but yeah, I remember thinking, oh, okay. But then, so Scarlet Witch did ninety nine percent of the work, and then I have to bring in four other champions to to take out Mordo. <laughs> yeah, but then right before twelve point now, we had the Doctor Strange movie, uh-huh. and I think along the same times, uh, maybe like a few months after, but still before twelve point now, we had this. Um, we had this monthly event quest with uh, Dormammu in it, right? Yeah. So Dormammu 
um, he ended up being the the complete counter to any champion that had a lot of buffs that expired. Yeah. And <laughs> if if you remember that Doctor Strange is basically just a buff making machine, right? Yeah. He's, he's he constantly has this buff up that is expiring constantly. So same with the Scarlet uh, Witch, kind of with all of her. We saw and... that. We saw that coming from. Uh, from a few miles away, I think they tried to counter them with those characters. But at the same time, we saw those characters being very, very unbalanced compared to characters of their time. Yeah. When you, when you, you know, when you set aside Scarlet, when you set aside Black Widow, when you set aside Thor, when you set aside all of those characters, uh, Mordo still uh, punished you if you parried him, right? Mm -hmm. Which I thought back then, with with the reliance on parries on every other character who couldn't have like five stacks of heal up at at any given time, like like Scarlet Bitch, you had to parry to reduce incoming damage. So that one basically just hurted every other character. Yeah. And I think Kabam saw that, and Kabam saw that they can't really. they resisted the really nerf. That. <laughs> they, they were the counter. The nerf. Yeah. And then there was there was this other event that was just the screaming just just the shouting that something's gonna happen and nobody's gonna like it, but it's gonna be good for the game. So when Labyrinth was first introduced, uh they they announced it. And then maybe like a, a few days later, it was opened up. Broto Labyrinth was opened up, and um, I remember like going through it and finishing up cha- up to chapter three of Broto Labyrinth. Right. Yeah. And then back then, my my account was was nothing, and I I couldn't really uh, proceed to chapter four. Yeah. Uh, chapter three had the um the hardest champ was like was it that Deadpool that healed? Deadpool. Yeah. The, the immune Deadpool. You you want to know who I used to Safe counter him? Guard. What did you use? Red Hulk. I, I Got used him to down, love man. my Red Hulk back then. <laughs> Got him down and, with that heat damage. <laughs> yeah, heat damage was nice, man. Yeah, it was it never fell weak. Off, but, yeah. But it's, it's amazing now. It was capped to six, but it was pretty nice. Uh, so back then, uh, they had to take down Labyrinth of Legends within, I think, the first 24 hours because some people managed to get through with Scarlet Witch. One lane or multiple lanes with Scarlet Witch. Oh my god. Okay, yes. You're you're starting to jog my memory a bit. Cause okay, so I definitely wasn't even part of Reddit at this point, but I was getting the yeah, in game yeah. messages. They were sending in game messages about Road to Labyrinth and yeah. Mark of the Labyrinth, stuff like that. Uh, and they had to change Mark of the Labyrinth to mm-hmm. to include the limber. The limber oh. wasn't there at the end. The, the, the start, right? Just the damage cap, right? <laughs> Just the damage cap was there. The they limber were, wasn't there. They were thinking Thor. They added the limber. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, the limber. So that that's what happened. And I think they shortened their uh, the enrage timer. So a four star can't really do much in there. And then doled. And they also doubled the rewards. Do you remember the doled uh, node? The doled node. Yeah, that was just the reduced crit rate for every yep, buff. Yep, yep, yeah. Fifty percent crit. So crit Scarlet rate Witch. It was just such an obvious uh, labyrinth is just so obviously counter- yeah, and, countering and uh, that, Thor and Scarlet Witch. <laughs> yeah, and that that whole thing when Dalt was introduced, um, it shut a lot of characters out of labyrinth. Yeah, that was a bad. It shut so many bad, characters bad, out of labyrinth. Bad move. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a bad move. I didn't it like was... it at all. I mean, I, yeah, it, I it's it, like you say, you couldn't use anybody because of the yeah, low crit yeah. rate. You could use Starlord, you could use Storm, and you could use uh, Rocket Raccoon. Mm. And I think that's it. Yeah. And then they did eventually get rid of that node, though. Yeah, yeah, they they got rid of it after 12.0 hit 
because I, there was I, no more need for it. Which let's let's be clear. I don't think they got rid of it until everyone said, "Hey, can you get rid of Dole now?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like for they sure. kept it in there. They didn't quite think of all. I think they saw a sort of an emergency and in in the Scarlet Witch existence and the Thor, and, and they didn't even consider all of the consequences when they just decided to slash them. Uh, they just thought this is a problem and we need to solve it now and deal with the consequences later. I feel twelve point oh was very rushed. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and, and there I don't want I don't know how much we want to talk about the deals, but there was those <laughs> awakening deals. Yeah, yeah. That happened right now. The before. awakening deals and you know, the the Doctor Strange crystal deals. Um I feel when it comes to balance in free to play games, it's such a such a tough thing to to actually accomplish, and it's such a tough thing to it's such a such murky waters to navigate. Mm -hmm. So you can have a uh, monetization, and you want to have uh, character balance, and you want people to invest in characters. But you don't want people to invest too much into their characters so they would feel like, you know, these characters cannot be ever changed if they, if they're, you know, uh, if it's needed for the betterment of the game. Yeah. Uh, but you isn't... You don't want... Go ahead. So isn't, it, can't you condition your players, though, to to be ready for that? Like, if... Yeah, yeah. It, you can definitely do that. It's the, it's the one... Ha hammer being dropped that really is what upset people and it continues to upset people because it's it's very rare that that character i think it changed. upsets people less now oh yeah. because they've been doing it i mean you could argue more frequently but not much but definitely more than they used to they're making changes they're buffing and they're introducing Taking away these certain abilities yeah right introducing uh, these synergies i think the the archangel thing could have mm. Could have me. sparked <laughs> as big of a controversy as 12.0, but it was yeah. smaller and it was just limited to one character and it was just one ability that it just, just take it to yeah. me. Yeah, I mean that is how balance should be done. It, it still yeah, bothered yeah. me. It's it bothered me because I know that. Um, well, they made it clear that they're not going to be continuously doing this to all the characters. Like this was just a one thing, one time thing. Some designer was trying to design a node, <laughs> and Archangel was slaughtering it. And so they just had to get rid of them. They had to put them down. But I, I can yeah. get behind that. But it's just like, yeah, they don't they don't often do that. And the, if they if you if you just nerfed the top champions even smaller amounts than that, just like reduce their armor by yeah, reduce by you know reduce <laughs> the Scarlet Witch region by five percent now. Yeah, five percent next patch, ten percent next patch. Yeah, and people All will right, see the that's trend. Fine, then. People will see the Reduce trend. Reduce her yeah. stun duration by ten percent now. Yeah. Uh, twenty percent next patch. Yeah. Uh, I feel people people will catch on, right? And, well, they would and, not only know what to expect because they'll say, "Oh, it's clear Kabam wants Scarlet Witch to be more towards the middle of the pack rather than yeah, obvious yeah. front runner." So they wouldn't invest their resources in her just. You know, just for the the object of having the best champion in the game, they would invest the resources in her if they just liked her, you know. And if it was clear that Caban wasn't going to go too far with a nerf, but and I feel just uh, they did go just too far adding with, to that, they they went too far with with, with Doctor Strange with the nerf with the initial nerfs, the initial twelve point oh nerfs. Yeah, she uh, was bad. They were too. horrendous. Yeah, they were horrendous, right? Black Widow, she did no damage. She had no ability action reduction, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, Scarlet Witch, she had like a 5% crit chance, which, where did that came from? That was nowhere in the patch notes. Yeah. So her crit, her crit chance went from 25% to 5%. That, what happened? Uh, yeah, that was and then real, real hard. Thor... Thor did, did no damage. <laughs> Thor was the what? Thor was the original hilarious. I mean, what it happened? was it was just completely gone. Just a hundred percent. He couldn't even kill anything. And <laughs> and Captain America, he was taking so much block damage. 
Oh yeah, Anyways, I forgot about that. It was yeah. it was crazy, right? Uh, yeah. Like that patch was must have been not tested at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agreed. But going from there, uh, they they moved to you know the the next patch, and they said that we we hear your frustrations and we uh, we know what's up. Yeah. And um, then they introduced then they kind of revamped them. And they said they're gonna bring them back to an acceptable level. Yeah. Um, I feel Kabam just took out their grudge on them. <laughs> he just <laughs> took out, just uh, executed the revenge on Scarlet Witch and Thor and those characters for, for making the game, you know, the the cakewalk that it was beforehand. Yeah, um, yeah, they definitely, they definitely did, and they did, they, but yeah, overall, i I was. You know, a month or a month or two after twelve point oh, I thought the game was heading in the right direction. Like, oh, absolutely! I yeah. was happy uh, with the balance, and I was like, you know, okay. It's right time. after twelve point oh, we had two characters. Well, we had three characters at it. We had Iceman, Archangel, and Psylocke, mm. and All, those were they were such perfectly a great balanced. Additions. Yeah. So Archangel, this dude can do massive, massive damage, but. You put him against any immunity champ, and he's crippled, right? Yeah. And Iceman, this dude is immune to this effect we barely see, but we'll see more of. <laughs> but he is also immune to bleed and poison, and he also prevents a stun, uh, prevents uh, evades, and he has a damage cap on himself, and and he's awesome, but his <laughs> damage is pretty low, yeah. so he's balanced, right? Yeah. Uh, Psylocke so had, was Psylocke was one of the more powerful power control yeah, champions yeah, available. Yeah. She still is. She's got some she, she's lovers. Fun, yeah. yeah, and she she does more damage I think than magic sometimes. Oh, <laughs> she's got quite a high crit rate, doesn't she? And, yeah, and yeah. she she gets crit damage from from her, from her sick. Anyways, um, yeah. So and then we move on from there. Um, we moved on to. A few months of pretty balanced champions, I think. King Groot was one of the one of the examples of, of a champion that was pretty balanced. Yeah. Um, Who else Angela. did we get? Yeah, we got Angela. She was good. We got um, twenty ninety nine. Twenty ninety nine. He came along with uh, with Carnage. Carnage. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but Carnage we can call an outlier. I'd say. Yeah, we can we can we can ignore him. Yeah, he's he... getting ignored anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they did overall a very very good job uh, with the champion design after twelve point oh. Yeah, I and... think those few months were were very good, but then, a few months later, oh, we boy. got a very uneven patch, with Stark Spidey and Vulture. Right, one champion who was one absolutely insane. Who, <laughs> I think at first glance, I, I watched this video from Joe Line, the late Joe Line back in the days, who um, was talking Joe. about this, the late Joe Line. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. Uh, he was talking about how Stark Spidey looks like the offensive Spider-Man that he has always been wishing to exist in the game. And he he picked up on that on the on the taunt and he picked up on the on the poise increasing his attack mm -hmm. and his crit rate. It was a great video and it was even before Stark Spidey was released as a playable character. Yeah. So that's that's the beauty of Joe Line for you. Um, so we had we had Stark come into the game. I don't think he was dumb as dominant as he became. No, a Initially. lot of people. A lot of people had crystal shards and actually missed him, as in yeah, like they yeah. they they didn't go for his his featured crystal and then they had to wait until he came around again. I think he was around the same time that Iceman was coming back as a featured crystal. Oh, featured five star. So maybe. people were going for Iceman. Yeah, that is. A, I think so. Yeah, that yeah. could be true. That sounds. That sounds about. Uh, Yep, and but people were pulling Archangel as well. People Similar. were pulling for uh, or for AA. Um, so and it was so interesting back then, I think. So Vulture though, Vulture wasn't very good, but then, but then after 
the the truth came out about spider-man <laughs> yeah like he was he was too good like i mean he he was everywhere yeah he, he was he was so good that he was like the old he was a new quote-unquote god tier champion i mean he could evade it was all a these new tier for sure unblockable specials were a big problem in alliance unblockable War. specials he had damage buildup that didn't require you to keep a combo uh and it was a he, fast buildup it was a fast buildup he had a low low base hp that i think made him somewhat balanced even back in the days uh but he, it's so yeah it's so easy to ignore the fact that he had a low base HP based on how easy it is to avoid specials with him and how, how fast he finishes fights. Taunt, but, taunt uh, lowered their attack by like 40%. Lowered their attack by 40%. It's a big deal. First first character who had taunt was Spider-Man, right? Yep, definitely. Then we saw a few more later on, but not as many. So what I thought was uh, so interesting was how when Blade came out... It was yeah. right around when Spark oh, man. was coming back around, and it was just like it, they timed it perfectly to make the hardest decision on, in it for everyone. <laughs> but you I had think the still a lot of, of people both. went with uh, went with Stark. Oh, a lot tons. of people. Still I did. Went with Stark. I I I also I had that choice. I saved um, from. I think right around... Oh, this is actually kind of interesting. So I think right around when Stark Spidey came around, I was doing my first Labyrinth Clear. Oh. And I had a... I grinded in the... Because I don't, I don't have... Uh, I didn't have any good like top-tier champions and Star-Lord's feature came around, I think. Yeah, four-star. Right, yeah. so I grind the, the four-star. I take him to 550, generic Awakening Gem, the whole the whole lot right and uh i do the clear and i have and it was painful right i have 30 yeah it was so painful man it was, it was like six thousand five thousand units five yeah yeah i did my 550 starler labyrinth first clear before 12.0 yeah that was and it was worse. horrendous oh my goodness dude <laughs> would have costed like almost twice those units oh <laughs> Yeah, but I remember having 30,000 five-star shards after that because uh, I had a few saved up, and I thought Stark Spidey, and then I, I was just starting to get into watching, like, Brian Grant and stuff, and I was like, oh, you know, I need some arena teams. I could probably get some... I might be able to get a Star-Lord out of this basic crystal, right? And I yeah, pulled yeah. just, like, trash, you know, Iron Patriot, Ant-Man, and Ronin, and... Uh, and then I was like, that's it. I'm done. And I just saved all the way until St Stark Spidey came back around. And uh, that was a good move. And in, in Blade came out the week before Stark Spidey came back. Was that it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember, uh, I remember Legacy. Legacy had a good early call on Blade. Uh, yeah, he had a good early call on Blade, and he had a struggle to awaken his Stark, Stark Spidey, right? Yeah, well, because <laughs> he went he he went out for Blade, you know? He, yeah, he uh, went all in for Blade, and then yeah. he... Uh, oh, man, it, I remember those times. It all was, very interesting stuff happening. The uh, game was changing so quickly because of Blade. and So Blade came in, yeah, and I was talking to Legacy on one of his streams... And it was the boss rush, and there was a Mephisto on on the boss of the boss rush. Yep. And I told him, "What if you use your blade against that Mephisto?" And he went in. He he did okay the first round. He didn't have the Stark synergy with him. And in the second round, he added the Stark synergy. The, the attack bonus from, from Danger Sense, it was still broken back then, right? There, he, there was no attack bonus, but he still got the, the additional ability accuracy reduction. Mm -hmm. And Mephisto wasn't proccing anything. He was, he was doing SP2s, and you know, he, was, he was killing himself <laughs> <laughs> practically with just the bleed. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was just craziness back then. And, and then Legs went for... Uh, went for five star blade and he took him to 455 mm -hmm. uh, he had a I remember he struggled to get a 
uh, to get a skill catalyst. And then I told him, uh, this guy can turn off nodes in Alliance War. I think he can also turn off nodes in Labyrinth. And that's where the idea of him turning off nodes versus uh, Abomination and Guillotine came from. Oh, okay. Oh, man. That's a, people use that regularly these days uh, to take uh, out Abomination and Guillotine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty good chance, right? It's like a 60% chance that your, the bleed wouldn't apply to them, the poison wouldn't apply to them, and, so and well, you go from there, right? Why, that's, the thing is, is why Kabam had just balanced their game pretty well. I mean, as well as they're going to get it for them. <laughs> they were releasing champions that seemed to be sort of of the same caliber. Uh, and then why? Why did they go ahead and release Star Six Spidey? And then it, it just, it was confusing. But I think what they were getting at is they wanted more people to get into Labyrinth. That's my guess. Is maybe, maybe. Maybe there was not enough of the... I think there were still people in denial of how good Blade was back then. I I'm, I'm, I was in denial of how good Blade was Oh, back yeah. Then. I, I certainly thought he was good, and I, I thought he was going to be more of a, a surviving champion rather than high damage because of this, the regen and everything. Yeah, because I, I remember watching videos, and then I took I, I grinded for a four-star Blade, I put up like that was one of my first featured four star grinds. Mm. Uh, I put up twenty two million for him. Uh, yeah, and uh, I remember taking him against the Venom in Act Four, and I I killed the Venom, but I I I thought I thought to myself that this this is fine, right? Because He's a four-star champ versus a champion in Act 4. But my blade was just rank 1. <laughs> and I made this post, this brag post on Reddit, saying, quote-unquote, uh, love, love, the, love the design of, of this character. He's, he's really balanced, and, and I love him. <laughs> he's really good. That post has since been deleted, because <laughs> I repented for my sins. <laughs> it was a crazy time, man. It was it, that that time at MCOC. I don't think we will ever see that again. No, I think they may have learned their lesson. <laughs> <laughs> they spent the next six months trying to beat Blade into the ground unsuccessfully. <laughs> but then, then they did it, right? They yeah. did it with uh, with Hero Defenders. Yeah, they, they did, did it the it right fit. way. I think I like the uh, way I like the way that they they got rid of like I don't the I didn't the right way and the wrong way. There I was think. a few hard counters I didn't like. Uh, what was the one that did? Da- oh, Killmonger's weird. Uh, that was like I didn't like his ability to gain power based on the debuffs. Mm-hmm. Just because I, I'm okay with it as a principle, but maybe it was a little tuned a little too high uh, to counteract Blade. And it really just yeah. hurt every other champion. <laughs> like Blade but was like, "Oh, I, I can feel do it when they did it wrong, especially was with cornered." Oh, the node. I think you yes, just, we've, yes, we've spoken about this, or I don't remember when. Yeah. I, oh, I, I mentioned it in, in, the in your live video. video right? Oh, yes, one of the worst nodes ever. <laughs> I hate that node. I think it limits a lot of champions. It limits a lot of other champions that that could be good on that node and. You know, it limits your archangels. It limits your Gwen pools, your killmongers. Yeah, why it limits they, your Hyperians. Uh, why did they come up with these balanced, a good attacker defender combo champions that are just good in general? If they're just going to nerf them via a node meant to counter somebody, to- compl- who doesn't even get countered by that node? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is which is crazy, right? You can control when you this blade dude he's hitting you with his blade but he's not putting a bleed on you when he's only when you, you want blade. only when yeah, you want Every, when you everything want. is on demand with blade <laughs> on demand yeah on demand uh, regen on demand bleed on demand insta kill uh, initially i was um i was pretty vocal about what i thought about blade and what i thought about what he's he's doing to the the meta 
Um, I think it's. I'm not sure what what would have been better for the game. I'm not sure if it if Blade had been nerfed, it would have been better for the game, or this current system is better for the game. But I think they they somewhat learned their lesson and they're moving forward. And we're seeing more and more, you know, hero defenders, and we're seeing more and more hard counters to the Trinity. We are seeing, and and speaking of Trinity, yeah, why the Stark, synergy? Why the synergy? That's just a whole other, uh, whole other can of worms to open. But uh, why did why give the synergy to three amazing characters? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows at this point? But uh, Stark Stark is getting countered now too with with crit resistance, right? That's that's the biggest thing he gets. Yeah. And that's the way they're countering it, and I think that's very destructive. Well, yes, because no, he's not the only champion that crits in this game. <laughs> and actually, even though he relies on it for his mega damage, other champions rely on it just to compete. I mean, yeah, they just need, to do any damage. Yeah, they need the critical hits to do anything sometimes. So yeah, I feel uh, that's just how they're they're answering Stark, but they it's fine because they can come up with champions who have guaranteed crits. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's it's um it is it seems like the pendulum swings farther every time. You know, like yeah, yeah. They have a uh, a champion, and then they have a counter, and then. The counters and the champions become more extreme. There is there is a clear power creep, and uh, I think the power creep is designed to counter the meta. But what it is really countering is characters who are already out of the meta, who can't keep up. Yeah. And now they can't keep up even more. Yeah. Right. It's so <laughs> rare. It's so rare to see a character re-emerge, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, they have to do a very surgical sort of go in and fix them like Luke Cage or Red Hulk for it to make any which, sense. Which was amazing, which yeah. was incredible. Both great. I, think that... great, uh, I thought the, the Luke Cage one was a little bland, the the buff, but it works. Like, I'll take Who it. are you calling bland? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I mean, they just said, "Oh, okay. Well, let's just give him damage for the yeah, thing. yeah." Is yeah. this it, okay? Fine, it works. Like I totally take it, and I like how his um, in his his indestructible should have always refreshed. Of course, that was a yeah. good change. But the yeah, it was a uh, it was just like, what can we do like immediately with as minimal coding as possible <laughs> to make this guy viable? You know, the Red Hulk one I like uh, better. It's it's a uh, oh, Red Hulk is a beast. Good change. Oh, it's what he should like. The Hulk should all hit super hard and. They shouldn't have much else going for them. Maybe some immunity, you know. But uh, uh, I like how Red Hulk now hits. I mean, even harder probably than than the Green Hulk. Uh, speaking of damage, like speaking of damage when it comes to Red Hulk and Luke Cage, that comes that brings it to you know what makes characters uh, serviceable these days because damage damage is king, right? And I think you you had quite a bit to. Uh, say about that when it comes to you know timers and nice words yes, and such. I I do think that the timer system doesn't necessarily help the game. I I can I think correct me if I'm wrong, but my guess is that they introduced it because they didn't want uh, one person getting stuck in a fight and preventing alliance mates from from joining a fight, or or maybe they, maybe they maybe. didn't want to. They wanted to counteract a low damage perfect block sort of style or. They wanted to counteract somebody like me who used to take Doctor Strange against Ultron and just yeah, do the yeah, fight yeah. 20 times until I won <laughs> <laughs> in the Alliance War. Like I would do that. I would just sit there for like an hour and play <laughs> play the fight over and over again. Hey, man, that actually sounds pretty fun. Yeah. Like a stamina test. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was it was just the only way I could do it because all the other champions, I would, I would just not be able to... Uh, I would die. I wouldn't time out. You know, I'd yeah. eventually lose health. So... The timer basically says now you have to finish this fight within three minutes or there's severe consequences. Well, all of a sudden, if you can't finish the fight in three minutes, your champion's not... It, there's no point in even trying. You can do the math before... You did this recently with uh, 
with Heimdall. You can do the yeah, math yeah. before you even try, and you'll know that a computer. You can get the. You can do the math before the champions release. Yeah, and you'll be. Oh nope, can't do the boss killer. Useless. <laughs> it's like oh god. Which is unfortunate, right? It's very unfortunate. Uh, it's he. I actually Heimdall is. This is this interesting true strike thing. It's a very another really hard counter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, All right, but, we'll get to true strike, yeah. but then we moved from villain defenders. Yep, from to heroes ability from ability accuracy stuff to auto block oh the auto block yeah the auto block which which did true strike prevented in, at the start no, no it no, didn't yeah that's right no it did yeah. not <laughs> of course it, it didn't a true strike typical... started to prevent it with killmonger right and Killmonger did have a very easy way to get the True Strike going. Super easy and super long. I think the first champion that got True Strike was uh, Karnak. Uh, Cable or Karnak? Cable, Cable and Karnak, I think. Yeah. One of them came first. Cable got it really difficult. It, Special like, 3? It came from SP3. It didn't last long enough. And I remember having all the last mate who took the map 6 spider-man boss mini boss <laughs> with cable oh and uh you know it, he would die a few times but then once the stars aligned and cable got the to power SP3, game it was all it was all fine from there but mm -hmm. before there it, it was it was such a such a niche ability i think very few characters had it it didn't do much it just ignored uh evade and it ignored uh um you know armors and it, it didn't do much but now it it's the king of any utility yeah i mean it's uh the armor is actually a thing now to uh, you, you, with critical yeah. resistance uh ignoring armor is going to be more important i think armor uh became a thing with sentinel yeah we, it became we a thing with uh with Labyrinth Ultron because he has this super strong armors that whenever he gets a stack of if he's awakened he reduces your uh, offensive ability accuracy mm -hmm. which is also interesting That which is also like an interesting defensive ability uh, you know if if you're if you're supposed to proc something you, you, you have a chance not to proc it but then we had Sentinel who introduced his own armor passively and you couldn't break that armor really because there was no armor buffs. Yeah. And then he 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 basically became crit immune. He became he 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 ended up having a ton of armor, and he ended up having like a local native uh, power reserve node on himself. Yeah, it was just a from the tough defender. Still is. Yeah, he was. He, 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 some knows, yeah. yeah. But then there was Killmonger with the armor uh, and crit resistance, and then there was the big boy Infinity War Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, uh, Iron Man definitely was the culmination of, <laughs> of these defense strategies. Culmination of, of the, def the armors and the passive armors counting towards oh. his. He just had he just had no. What I liked about him though is he didn't have like a direct counter uh, when he came out, but it was actually yeah. a play style that countered him, which I kind of like. The whole the, the heavy he counter. Yeah, right? yeah, I think that's cool. Like that's a way to play against him with any champion that will at least keep you in the game. You might time out, obviously, with certain champions. Yeah, and I but... think uh, that's also super interesting because Ghost and Heimdall both get pretty big advantages from doing heavy countering oh really yeah because ghost gets the fury buffs from heavies yeah that's true isn't it and yet she has to hold the heavies so if you're countering them countering them with with your heavy you're basically holding it for for a little period of time and heimdall gets the permanent uh buffs from charging heavies and mm -hmm. you know that's that's just where it kind of came from so they're they're basically evolving meta towards heavy countering I like I that. would not be I would not be surprised to see a character who has an un uninterruptible heavy a kingpin. Yeah, well another one that actually matters. 
<laughs> Kingpins is all right. It's not great, but it's fun in yeah. an arena. Yeah. But I, I, I enjoy heavy, heavy champions that rely on heavy attacks. So I don't know why, but there's just like certain appeal of trying to time it all right. Uh, I think it gives you the the impression that you're actually doing combos, not just tap and swipes. Right. Yeah, I think that's true. Like I like um, Quake. Obviously, that's a different sort of thing. But yeah, I yeah. like Phoenix. I love trying to weave in the heavies when I see a double medium to just okay, it's time to throw a heavy right now. And uh, and I like Sentry when he gets into that perfect block stance. That, that is pretty sick. That yeah. I've seen your videos, and those heavies can do some dude, damage. Dude. I know it's like it's like almost a guaranteed at least like fifty k damage during that stance. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty intense. Uh, so I don't know. It's I like it. It's changing very fast, though, isn't it? Do you think like they're just? It's not such a slow. I feel shift auto block anymore. has been along for a while now. Auto block the 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 mechanic, but the the counters are coming out quickly, and yeah, yeah. all of a sudden like Corvus is out, and boom, it's he's just so important. Corvus is out, Heimdall is out. Yeah, Heimdall's then, coming. Who uh, knows what's next? I I like having offensive counters, uh, but more offensive counters means more need for more elaborate defensive measures, right? Yeah, they have to keep up. The, the two sides cannot outweigh each other. You can't have too, too powerful of an attacker, and you can't have too powerful of a defender. The first situation was happening when Scarlet Witch was around, yeah. and the second situation was probably happening a lot around the time with Dormammu, right? Um, <laughs> the, um, the amount... The, 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 the duration of the fights with Corvus is a little absurd. <laughs> like, oh. I don't know if they... <laughs> did they... They must have. T- they have to. I, I keep feel saying Corvus it, is. Is, uh, he, is he balanced? Do you think? I think he's okay. I feel Corvus he requires is a lot of, of um, boosts to make this boost, all work. Yeah, yeah. And there was uh, a lot of resources. People are going broke in alliances, boosting their Corvuses every every fight. And you know, some of those boosts are not necessarily purchasable with oh, units. Yeah. They go go for loyalty. Actually, those cosmic ones. And they're they're not always available, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah, Corvus is fine. I think, um, and also people are, are placing defenses in such a way that you can't uh, build up can't charges. Build up yeah. charges. I love that that aspect of the strategy of countering the Corvus attackers. It's uh, it's, it's easy to counter him, I think, uh, but at the same time, it some of the videos you see, like I saw uh, Alliance War boss five sixty five Iceman takedown. It took forty seconds, and I was like, what? <laughs> What yeah. happened there? Just wait uh, till the six stars are, uh, are like rank, uh, rank three, three defenders, yeah. and he'll he'll start taking a little bit more time. Six yeah. stars suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was just not there wasn't really a big a huge point <laughs> like why. <laughs> there, there is some why, point please. to you know people getting four fifty five equivalent check characters without having to spend resources on them, but. Mm, yeah, I it's mean, all so RNG. I feel at the end of the day, um, I've I've had have had some awesome six star luck, and I've had, I've had some atrocious six star luck. So I think it balances out. Here's what I like but, about him: the arena. I like how you only oh, have to run them yeah. twice. I can't wait for a time when I only have to play arena once or twice a day. Thirty three six stars. That's the gold, baby. I thought it was num- I thought thirty was the magic number. I think Brian did the math wrong. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't wait. I mean, I just I run. I only run three times a day now. I don't ever yeah, yeah. go in Same for here. anything other Same than here. a five star. No. So. Uh, but now we are seeing. Uh, with with the Domino, meta. Mm-hmm. Is, is I Domino think this is a... really taking over or no? She, no, she, no. She, she seems like not the hardest defender for me. I think she was more of an attempt at a meta than an actual execution. But I think Korg is going to be that ex- execution. Korg uh. is really interesting. Korg is going to give you a significant damage back if you hit him with anything other than a light attack. Right, so you're gonna have to play it real slow versus him with those. So uh, f- what you can you do four hits. Him, how you counter him 
is you intercept him with a light attack. Mm -hmm. So if you intercept him with a light attack, he loses his uh, rock shield or whatever it's called. Oh, does he Uh, really lose it? Yeah, it starts to fall off and then he won't be doing damage back to you until it's refreshed. Uh, So it's completely avoidable if you can do this pretty challenging thing that not everyone can do and not everyone can do safely. Mm -hmm. And there's there's some fishy AI stuff going on with intercepting too. Yeah, big time. (laughs) With with light intercept, the dude just uh, comes in and shoves you. It's it's learning, man. Either Kavam's programming it or the AI is doing its job and it's getting a little bit better at fighting. Because I think they can program it with machine learning for these things to get better over time if they want. Yep, that sounds like Skynet. <laughs> uh, I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't punish us, Skynet, please. <laughs> if you're listening. They're always listening. But I think that's, that's pretty interesting. I think that's... Uh, that's enforcing a play style, a play style that is completely different from what you normally do. From swipe, tap, 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 swipe, mm-hmm. swipe, tap, 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 swipe, special swipe, tap, 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 swipe. Now you're gonna have to interest over the light, interest over the light enough to get rid of the shield, and then you can fight as normal, right? Mm-hmm. And he's gonna be a hero. He's not gonna have that many counters he's gonna be bleed immune uh i think he's gonna be good for the game i think sentry's gonna be good for him <laughs> sentry he'll have well, the class disadvantage but see i like i think um i think we won't see a meta shift but we'll see a resurgence of indestructible uh being useful if they're gonna request yeah, yeah, uh yeah. intercepts People are going to make mistakes, and being having For a sure. little forgiveness there is going to be really useful. So, loot cage, great. Papa. And, uh, Papa. <laughs> yeah, Sentry's got a really good mechanic there where if you lose your combo, you're, uh, you're safe. You, you, you get to reset. So, that'll be interesting. But he does, he, um, he will struggle versus boss fights in Alliance War just because he doesn't quite make it i mean he has enough damage to do it but it's it's very close i think he can do it uh, have you ever tried them versus bosses oh my god I can't, th- these guys won't let me take sentry into attack <laughs> 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 they're like that's i think somebody was like if you want to you can just don't die and i'm like oh great now i but can't I'm now i die. definitely can't try i'm probably gonna die man <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my chance. I'm definitely going to... There's going to be a, 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 a section of like of wars where I'm just going to do him exclusively. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, it'll be fun. But um, I think they're moving from... Moving away from... Or at least they're trying to move away from the, the, the monotonous tap, 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 swipe. Yep. Uh, the parry five at combo, parry five at combo. Yeah, they don't like yeah, it, which um, is fair because it's kind of boring. It's so repetitive. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like it either. Uh, so I think they're trying to move away, move away from that with Domino and with Quark. Because oh, Domino has. Do you think they designed that on purpose? The lag between her her medium. I think so. I think so. Venom kind of has that too, you know. Venom has the lag uh, right the... after his his first medium, right? You can yeah. you can actually do a medium right after that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, the Domino is just so much easier. <laughs> oh, she's much the lag the the delay is much much more. But if they um, one of the issues they're gonna have is is that the damage on defense is scaled up so high that mistakes are gonna really be costly, like. Okay, I just like mentioned like indestructible is going to be useful, but it can't be the only thing. You know, if 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 you're if you're doing that and you're using like blade, say, and you yeah, just get yeah. two shotted with a double hit from Domino or from Korg, it's not going to be fun. People are going to get real frustrated if uh, if they're required to intercept, uh, and it's going to cost um, them I money. I think there's there's upsides and downsides to that, and costs in the Lions Wars they have been getting crazy I feel uh, oh yeah so uh, as I was saying 
beforehand. I think maybe this was off air. Maybe this was on air. Who knows? Um, I don't like to. I don't like to boost in Ice Wars. I don't like to heal up to full. Not because I'm stingy or because I don't have the stuff, but because I feel the pressure. when I do those things, the, the pressure just, just intensifies them. I agree, you know? but I can't justify the not doing it. I, yeah, you know, like yeah, I, there's a... I just, I do, I 100% play better when I have, when there's, when, when I start the fight with like half hit points. I don't know why, I just do. There's there's less room for error and the pressure is lower because you know if I pull this off, it'll be a nice little comeback sort of win and you just, you make it happen. But if, if you heal up to full, you're expected. I mean, this, you better, you better come out of this alive. Yeah, but that's speaking of the cost, it just brings us right back to, you know, the current meta of Corvus. Mm, yeah. Which is crazy expensive, which is just absurd when it comes to. He's, yeah, he's a, he's a, can, he's a giant cannon that shoots loyalty. <laughs> just, yeah, loyalty, and then just you gotta spend uh, glory and uh, not glory. Well, some more loyalty, mastery, like doubling respects. down on loyalty because of the the uh, cosmic power boost and cosmic special boost. You've you've got to be on suicides, yeah. Suicides and champion boosts, and he you can't play with him without champion boost, but. It, what are you thinking? Taking bosses without champion boost? How, how dare you? Yeah. Uh, so, where do you think where do you think it's going? Like, I'm not I sure. mentioned I'm some not indestructibleness. Sure I think that's that's I can I'll I'll predict that. I don't know if I'll be right, but what's the? Uh, I don't know what we can look forward to. I think what did we write down here? Uh, anti dexterity. Oh yeah. Anti dexterity is actually a thing that's happening. <laughs> With, it uh, has been happening for a while now. It has Heimdall been happening with Void. And Void, yeah. Uh, Domino and Heimdall. Yeah, yeah. I can see, That is interesting, especially with Stark Spidey. That's definitely trying to take him down. Uh, no, Yeah, no more dicks, no more um, dicksing yet, I think. It's, it, it's something that can be happening more and more. I don't think it's... I don't think it's bad unless if they go overboard with it. Yeah, it's a it's a soft uh, touch at the moment, which would be okay. Yeah, it's a it's a periodical conditional thing right now. Right, and it's and, and it's avoidable as, as long as they leave it that way. It will be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we are gonna see more unblockable stuff. Right. Because a well, lot of the a lot of the fights I see maybe more in Ice Wars will make a comeback. You know he can block unblockables, like unblockable hits and you know oh, hits that break okay. through your block, right? Like you know Rhino, more yeah, Rhinos. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I can see that happening. That'll definitely encourage the sort of light intercepts uh, and and stuff like that. I th- I think that that could that could come back eventually, um, uh, but. For the meantime, any champ that has true strike is gonna be more valuable. And I was talking to you earlier in the in the Reddit thread that Heimdall looks like he's exactly out of Thor one. Yeah. And his abilities look a lot sound a lot a lot like Carnage. But <laughs> they just left they just left some uh true strike on him and some auto block. So his meta <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's they did they, the rest of his abilities are pretty standard, I guess, for Kabam. Like you know, get some buffs, make them, make, make them permanent. Make him pay, yeah. yeah, and then now, but they did the auto block's weird. I don't. That's just I guess I, I like to try and invent reasons why they they put certain abilities on champions, and I oh, think I see he sees the head coming <laughs> yes. a thousand miles away. I think that's it, right? <laughs> that's the uh, that's the reason why they give him auto block. <laughs> I think Which that's I okay. Think it's it's fine. I think the auto block is is twenty five percent every time he activates a special. It it's so easy to counter it with with the magic. He you actually lets his guard him. down too. Uh, if you just keep, I don't know. I noticed in the event quest that uh, I would get auto blocked. Uh, obviously, that'll parry you in alliance. Yeah, War. <laughs> but uh, I noticed. Uh, but you know what's funny? Yeah. 
his crit chance is so low and his base attack is so low that even if he auto blocks you in the Lion's Wars, I think I can survive like 10 5 hit combos from this dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna crit me he's not gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe not i mean especially if you have the yeah papa luke in there be, yeah, i mean medusa you it. look at her she gets fury and then she armor breaks you and then oh, you're man. dead <laughs> yeah speaking of i had a old alliance mate of mine send me a screenshot of a medusa throwing an 18 19 thousand medium attack Jesus. Yeah, three three armor shatters and six furies, but like uh, he didn't even have suicides on. That was versus uh, power reserve, right? No, he was. That was on the. Uh, it was a medium attack. It was in Realm of Legends. He was just farming potions. How did he get three armor shatters? On? I don't know. Uh, probably the royal family using the heavies. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. But uh... <laughs> pretty intense. <laughs> What I would love to see, other than you know the the whole meta stuff, mm-hmm. I would love to see more champion reworks. I would. Yes. I know that there should be one a month. There should be one new character a month and a rework. Or you know, however they want to do it, they have it. They have a schedule. Great, but this was this was what was said in the in the video with Brian. Uh, that um, two cosmics. No, not just the two cosmics, but the thing that was said there was that they have a set budget and it's so easy to cut champion reworks off of the release. Yeah, he did say that, which shows that the priority is fairly low. Yeah, which is, you know, it's understandable. Kind of heartbreaking. Uh, it's understandable, but it's, it's also. My Ant Man. Uh, <laughs> Or my black bolt. I guess black I bolt's okay. I honestly feel that. I honestly feel maybe seventy five percent of the characters in the game need a tweak to be even comparable to a lot of the top champions in the game. You know, some of the champions that you may call demigod tier. Yeah. They could also use a tweak. To you know. Some need way more than a tweak. I mean, I think. Would it be a would would you think it would be a bad thing if if all the champions were somewhat on equal footing, just unique in their own ways, but just they all sort of have. I the think same that power? would be really hard to do, but I think if they can pull it off, like our beloved Dota, yep, it can be incredible. It yeah. can be the the. Uh, you know, people say that champions need to be different because you know. You should you should get excited if you put a, pull a good champ and you know how you can't really get excited if you pull a good champ if you hadn't pulled like ten shitty champs beforehand. Yeah. But that is that just comes back to RNG and how how unrewarding and unfulfilling it is to um, just pull champions, right? Uh, and I've I don't I think at least for me and I think a lot of people can find enjoyment in pulling a champion even if they're not good, as long as they I like them. I mean, this this game is from yeah, the yeah. Marvel Universe, and people love their Marvel characters. And I would love to actually say that I play with Captain America, the yeah. OG Captain America, and he actually is great. I would love to say that I play with War Machine, Winter Soldier. For me, Black uh, Panther Civil War. Would Iron be. Man, Black it's, Panther Civil War. His movie came out, and... You know, I'm just all I wanted to do after the movie was go back and like take on Red Hulk and Labyrinth of Legends with my Black Panther. You know, I'm yeah, like, pretty much. Can't like, do that. <laughs> that's one. I I promise that I won't talk about this game in this episode. But that's that's one of the main reasons I actually got uh, so attracted to Future Fight because yeah, uh, their Black Panther does a ton of damage and he actually feels like he you're playing a character from the movie right which is yeah. incredible i think that is that is amazing but when we don't have reworks when we ha- when we keep having you know um iron man infinity war coming out instead of you know the old iron man getting a new suit yeah it 
it it's kind of disappointing i think <laughs> oh yeah i can uh, the gold standard is dota if they can anything they can do to get closer to that <laughs> it would be yes. great yes if people who are More. listening haven't ever played dota be careful but it is a great game it's very addicting. yeah <laughs> super careful uh, i started playing it um i think second year of college and i actually got my current fiance into it no <laughs> and we played that game for hours and now i know why you married her <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey what, what year were you in college second year no i mean what what year year like it what was the date uh, i'm trying to line um, it up for when i was playing dota i don't rem- i was playing dota in 06 all I think way. it was one year before that. Okay. Oh five, I I entered. Oh second year. And. I was playing before Frozen Throne came out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? Like, I mean, I don't mean. I think there's a World of Warcraft Frozen Throne. I mean, Warcraft Three Frozen Throne. Yeah. I remember playing it when uh, actually even I don't think Ice Frog even designed the map. I think I have, like, back then. Do you remember the tank with the star? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. There, that was, like, the trick. I remember the tank. <laughs> and I remember the anti-mage with his uh, his ultimate being teleportation. And that was so powerful back it then. Was, that was. That was just incredible. changing But then I remember, <laughs> think about, like, uh, a couple years later and almost every character has some way to get around easier. Movement, yeah, movement is so interesting in 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 Dota. That movement, movement. speed, teleportation, you know, coordination. And then they they introduced the whole slow mechanic. In. Slow, yeah, and then the yeah. the force staff where you can move your opponents and and your allies. Oh yeah, God. so oh, make, make I'm getting I'm the willies like, just oh, thinking I'm, about it. I'm just <laughs> God, I love that uh, game. I may need a new pair of pants. <laughs> uh, but, so. yeah, make MCOC like, like Dota. Make it so that every champ actually does something. And the something that they do is meaningful. Yeah. And more champion reworks. I feel people... I understand the need for this game to be monetized. And I feel people would and should spend more resources and cash and time to obtain those rework champions. I think they, they had this Luke Cage arena after his rework, but his the reception wasn't that, that good. I feel he went for like 30 million in arena, mm-hmm. and compared to the, the beast that he had just become, uh, I mean, I feel he should have gone more. <laughs> Yeah, the animations didn't change or anything though, so he still looked yeah, the same. Yeah. Which, which yeah. that's another um, tick on the uh, tick of the box for future fight with the whole uniforms thing. You know, reskinning wouldn't be ev- an evil thing in MCSC, I don't think. It, or it could be evil. <laughs> they they could make it evil. <laughs> they could make anything evil, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. But but it would be a welcome addition, I think, by most people if they if they did it right. It's, it's if they game. did it right, if they I feel if they lock the rework champion behind yep, a, new skin. a paywall or a grind wall, I think people would be fine with it because, you know, this game has to be monetized somehow. Definitely. But, uh, but you know, the current state of introducing two, three characters every new month, every month, it. I'm not sure how sustainable that is, and I'm not sure... If there are enough popular characters who can actually sustain that, uh, I, I would love to see more reworks. They might have a phase, like phase three or phase two sort of plan to to get out of that game of bringing in new popular champions along with the MCU. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, though. The, the movies aren't going to stop anytime soon. The movies aren't gonna stop, and they have to. I think they're ob- obligated to actually like uh, promote for the movies. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they are. 
Hmm. Interesting. Well, <laughs> I think we should probably call I it I think there. we should probably <laughs> call it there and go and play some Dota. Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I what? Don't...